everybody and a warm welcome here to the wine with jimmy channel thank you for stopping by this is all things wine for those of you getting into it and of course those of you studying the world of wine we are here looking at a series on spain specifically here on rioja and this is for the wset level four what's the, called the diploma uh, this is going to be a nine part multi-series getting into the real good stuff of this fascinating wine region, of course, really flying the flag for Spanish wine across the whole gambit. So uh, more affordable, more friendlier wines all the way up to, of course, top premium wine styles as well. So uh, we will find that the first two videos, the first two parts, are available as free content. So this video and the one following. All other videos, that's parts three to nine, are available only on my e-learning portal. That's over at winewithjimmy.com. So lots of exclusive video content over there, lots of extra resources to help you study the world of wine more. Okay, let's start talking about Rioja, and we're gonna go into the real sort of nitty gritty of this wonderful area. So first of all, we need to get an idea about the location of Rioja. So we are looking here at a couple of maps. We have uh, a map of all of the autonomous mainland provinces of Spain. And you can see that in yellow, we have highlighted the location of Rioja. And then we have uh, sort of zoomed in on this on the right hand side showing um, the northern part of Spain, bordering France, on the Bay of Biscay. Uh, you'll also notice uh, you've got uh, Rioja here on the Ebro River, uh, north of places like uh, Valladolid, Segovia and Zaragoza. OK, so there is your location for it in the north of Spain. Uh, now, it is really on the northeast uh, of the Castilla e Leon. Uh, it is then bordered on the north by the Basque country, so the Pius Vasco. The Navarra area also borders it. We have uh, a little smidgen of Aragon bordering it as well. So it is a landlocked autonomous region. Uh, the region, it is called La Rioja. The wine is called Rioja. OK, so uh, and also in terms of the pronunciation of Rioja, um, there are some people that say Rio, Rioja, uh, Rioja. Uh, it depends on really where you are and what type of Spanish language you are uh, saying. So if you uh, look at the Basque, they have a much more uh, distinctive sound to the, almost like a K in there uh, where you find the J, whereas Castellan actually is much more of a softer sound. So it depends. It absolutely depends on uh, what you are saying. OK, so uh, let's have a little, little look about um, some of the famous sites uh, of the area. Oh, before I do, just a little bit on the uh, the the size of the wine region. It's actually about 100 kilometers long and about 40 kilometers wide in places, certainly at the maximum size. The capital city is Logroño. Uh, the area is only about one percent of Spain. It's ranked about 16th out of the autonomous provinces. And the population is pretty low. The total area is only about 320,000 people. Uh, so it's not a significantly large area. The capital is Logroño, as you can see here in this picture. And uh, this is kind of, it's on the Ebro. It's kind of central uh, in La Rioja. And it's a really exceptional place. It's um, a place which has the very famous Trail of the Elephants, which is a Pinchos Trail, a tapas trail which is much smaller than, say, San Sebastian, but still very important area to go and visit. And of course, uh, usually the area where you will cite yourself to go and discover most of uh, La Rioja. Um, and then to more towards the northwest, uh, up the uh, Ebro River, as we head towards the Cantabrian mountain range, we have the much smaller uh, city of Arro, uh, which is famous for the Estacion, or the train station district, uh, which was very well connected uh, and a lot of bodegas, wineries sprung up ar around this area. So you'll see here you've got La Rioja Alta, you've got Muga in the foreground uh, as well. Uh, in the background, you can just about see here is Tondonia and you've got Roda 
uh, just here. Kune is off to the left of this picture. Uh, so quite a few name, uh, famous names. And um, Cruz Gomero as well, I think, is just off to the right of this picture. Um, so some really famous places that one really must visit when you go to Rioja. Uh, so in terms of um, the history is now what we're getting into. The history, uh, of course, very much ties into the uh, series that I was teaching about in terms of an introduction to Spain. There are crossovers, of course, because Rioja wines have been exceptionally important in terms of Spanish wine in the history. Um, now, the early settlers here were the Phoenicians. That's what the map in the foreground is showing you, coming from modern day Lebanon, uh, but traveling to places like Cyprus, Greek islands, North Africa, Sicily, Sardinia, Corsica, and Balearic and Spanish lands. So they actually came as far north, certainly going up the Ebro River. Um, and then Romans as well. So there is the Segovian Roman aqueduct in the background of this picture, uh, which is actually uh, in, in the area of, of Segovia, the, uh, the part of, uh, of, of Segovia uh, <coughs> in the town itself, sorry, in the bottom part of Castilla and Leon. Uh, so um, Romans, of course, both making wines here with the Phoenicians. Now, archaeological exploration has uncovered evidence of a local cistern from the period going back to the Phoenicians with a capacity to hold around 75,000 litres of wine. So we have information that really dates uh, uh, certainly wine production back to these uh, early civilizations. If you do have any comments or questions, please get in touch. You can do so by uh, typing away below this video in the comments section. Let me know about your experiences with Rioja. Let me know about your experiences if you've been to the region. Uh, let me know any questions or comments you may have. OK, let's have a look at the next slide where we focus on the Middle Ages. And we are talking really here about the spread of Christianity. So this is after, of course, the civilizations like the Phoenicians, Romans and Visigoths. We then have, of course, the influence of the Moors. Uh, but once again, when that started to collapse, we have the Reconquista and more stable times. And we have the emergence of many, many monasteries utilizing vineyards, production of grapes and wine for sacramental liturgical purposes. Um, so we have a couple here being quite important. Uh, we have the Suso Monastery uh, established around the 6th century, and it's kind of almost like a, a hermit um, monastery. And then the Yuso, the word Yuso meaning below or lower, uh, is an 11th century Benedictine monastery. Uh, certainly was the largest vineyard owners during that time and also have the first evidence of written Castilian at that time as well. Uh, so quite uh, quite important. There you see the monastery of San Milan de, de Corolla and that's the Yuso uh, part of it, as you can see. Next up, uh, just to mention around that time as well, the Middle Ages, of course, the Camino de Santiago, the Way of St. James, uh, comes through here. You can actually see it here on this map. So you can see it coming through um, Pamplona of Navarra and then joining all the way down to the Ebro. Here's the Ebro River, as you can see. Uh, so crossing the Ebro through Logroño and then through many parts of La Rioja as it goes into Castile Leon on its way to Burgos. Uh, so, of course, the Camino de Santiago traverses La Rioja. Uh, vineyard land increased as the monasteries and villages popped up along the Camino de Santiago. Um, <clears throat> now, the next thing to talk about is Rioja getting its name for exports. Uh, so the first exports of wine here was in the 13th century, selling the excess supply after the, the Reconquista. Uh, and selling to quite important traders, specifically the Dutch and then the English as well. Uh, now, this developing trade with its Basque country neighbours, of course, both of those, the Dutch and English, having important influences there, served as quite an impetus for the bodegas to expand their wine production. Of course, there was a market for it. Um, we actually see that really expanding and the area of Rioja needing to uh, actually set its first regulations. In the middle of the 16th century, local authorities created safeguards to protect 
reputation by not allowing purchase of grapes outside of La Rioja. Now, it also continued further regulation and legislation with the Royal Economic Society of Rioja wine growers in the end of the 18th century. So you see these uh, sort of foundations in terms of protecting the name of Rioja. Then we have some early Riojan pioneers in the 18th and 19th century. Now, we know that after the Reconquista, Span Spain really enters its golden age and we have exploration with the likes of Columbus and Magellan. We have arts, uh, we have great literature as well. And of course, we have the expanse of wine, Rioja really growing sherry as well. Pioneers then include, uh, first of all, on the left hand side, Don Manuel Quintano. He was a canon in the Holy Orders whose family produced wines, traveled to Bordeaux, bringing back not only the expertise in wine making, but also things like Cooper, so Cooperage, uh, and also uh, introducing oak barrels through that process. Now, very few grape growers, winemakers at that time followed his early practices as it was ruled that there should be no price differential between the various wines produced in Rioja at that time. And of course, his methods meant more expense. Uh, so, of course, they won't tend to be followed. Then in the 19th century, we have uh, the Marques de Riscal and the Marques de Morieta, so the central picture and the right hand side. Uh, and this is the around the time. So the Spanish um, civil wars of the mid 19th century, which was disputing the succession to the Spanish throne, meant that both uh, Luciano de Morieta, uh, who become the Marc de Morieta on the right hand side, and the Marques de Riscal both sought exile in Bordeaux. And that's for quite some time. Uh, they then returned when safe and they put their practices, what they had learned in Bordeaux, uh, in place in Rioja, including maturation and barriques. The quality of their wines eventually convinced the local government and other producers that the techniques that they were employing were the way forward. And of course, we're really... Um, planting the seed for this amount of oak maturation, which becomes exceptionally important in La Rioja and then across Spain as a whole, founding the regulation of aging and labeling. So things like Crianza, Reserva and Gran Reserva. Uh, next up, so wine production gradually recovers after um, you know, a succession of issues. Uh, so, of course, problems around things like civil wars, Phylloxera as well. Uh, and eventually we have the Rioja Wine Exporters Syndicate being uh, formed, established in 1907. And that's to guarantee the authenticity of Rioja's wine in export markets. And also then we have the foundation of Rioja's uh, Consejo Regulador in 1926. And it becomes the first on, of any Spanish area to actually adopt that. And that is the badge you see there, the very famous emblem of Rioja. And I'm throwing one in for good measure here, just because this is a nice bit of history. So this is around the end of the 19th century. In 1890, uh, we have the year that electricity comes to Harrow. Remember the smaller town situated towards the Northwest, famous for the um, Barrio de Estación, so the, the, the train station district that has Roda, Tondonia, Muga, uh, La Rioja Alta, and so on. Uh, now, Harrow uh, has electricity uh, first in Spain, along with Jerez down in Andalusia. These are the, the first two places. Uh, and it's very famous. There's a, there's a famous, they, they love this fact. They love to sort of promote this marketing. There's a famous phrase that goes with this time. Uh, the phrase Harrow, Paris, and London was coined as it was culturally ahead of other cities, gaining electricity before others. So uh, the local populace believed that they had cultural importance that would actually equal the likes of Paris and London, which is quite, uh, which is quite wonderful. 
Okay, so that really brings me through the Rioja history. Uh, and of course, you know, modern history, which goes through, of course, the same thing, First World War, Second World War, and then the re-establishment uh, is the same across most Western parts, and then entry into the EU, uh, gaining access to funding and so on around that time. I'll actually mention that a little bit more as we go into grape growing on the next video, because in fact, EU subsidies are quite important in transforming the landscape in Rioja. Uh, so just please do join me for part two on climate and grape growing. It's quite a big video, but well worth it uh, to give you the idea around uh, all of the vineyard characteristics of La Rioja. Once again, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please pop it in the comments section below. Great to hear from you. Have you tried some wines? What's your favourite Rioja? Also, uh, make sure you click like and subscribe as well whilst you are down there. Uh, if you want access to all the exclusive videos and also extra resources, of course, visit www.winewithjimmy.com where you'll get extra action uh, in that uh, aspect. Thank you very much for your time and attention. See you on the other side. Goodbye for now. Bye bye.